Hey guys, Mr. Relatable here. Welcome to part one of my new series that I'm going to be making called Creative Basics. This is a series that I want to do at least twice a week just to get more content onto the YouTube as well as help out new players who are trying to get into Fortnite Creative for either, you know, the first time or maybe they're experienced players who just want to know a little bit more about mechanics. So this series is going to be primarily focused on mechanics and how they work. So episode number one. We are going to be going with the bread and butter of mechanics music sequencers. This is what they look like. You can find them under the devices tab. When you open your inventory, you hit the little creative button up in the top, go to devices, and they are right at the bottom. There are these little blue kind of pad looking things and they say music sequencer on them. Now, what are they actually used for? Well, music sequencers originally, I believe when they came out, were made for creating music. So if we throw down this music block gallery, we can grab a few notes and just kind of put them on the track, similar to like this. So to give some idea of what's going on here is when you place down a music sequencer, there's going to be a bar that comes out like this. And I believe it's a four by one bar. Now, what happens is when you hit the music sequencer button, a kind of signal is going to travel all the way down this track. So I'll hit the button here to give you guys an idea of what's going on. There you go. So you see this little bar kind of goes across and that's kind of like a, what we would call a signal. Now, how does that work over here? Well, if you put music notes in it, it actually plays it back for you. See, so it hits the three music notes that we have. Well, you could use music sequencers for that. However, this is more about mechanics and what music sequencers can do. So that's kind of the basics of music sequencers in terms of getting music set up. It's very simple. You just put the note and then you hit the button. Okay, well, now how do they work exactly? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Hit the button and the bar goes down. Now, what exactly can you do with them? Well, you can play the music as we've already discussed, but you can also do a lot with them, to say the least. The one thing that is very key for making mechanics is you can chain them together. So if we have a system like this, what's going to happen is this bar is going to travel down the track, hit this button, this button's gonna activate and release a bar that travels down this track. Then this button's gonna be activated and a bar will travel down this track. So if we grab a note just for visualization and put it at the end here, if we hit the button, you'll notice that the bars go down each other's tracks and then we get our little music note at the end. So this is kind of how you want to make mechanics with music sequencers. If you guys have been paying attention, you should have noticed that there is a customize option. We're gonna go into the settings now of music sequencers and what each of them do. So there's a lot here, so bear with me. There's looping. What we can do is put a amount of a looping that we want this to do. So if we hit this button, if we have it on times two looping, what this means is that bar, AKA the signal that goes down the track will go twice. So if we just hit accept here, if I hit the button, the bar goes once and now twice, and then the bar goes away. This isn't terribly useful. It's very, very niche of using the amount of numbers. I haven't found a great use for the amount of numbers. However, infinite is very, very nice because this just means that the sequencer will just go forever and keep bouncing back and forth. But that's enough about looping. Tempo and BPM, that is how fast the signal travels. So if we put it all the way down to one, fun fact about these, if you click on the number, it goes up by one, as well as if you click on the number and then use your arrow keys on the keyboard, you can go up and down. That's only if you're on PC. On console, I'm pretty sure you just use the joystick. However, if we put it on one, you'll notice it travels very slow, extremely slow for that matter. Now, if we go to the settings and put it on 180, it travels extremely fast. So this is pretty much the speed that this travels at. The length is pretty self-explanatory. The length, if we put it on normal, it goes to a one by one area. And if we move it up to, let's say a 10, it's a very, very long travel. 
we'll put it back down to four for now. The width is the width of the track. So you can see it kind of moved down by one. If we put it on two, it gets fatter. If we put it on six, it gets very fat. But we're just going to put it on normal yet again. The height, exactly what you think. It goes up. So now when you hit the button, the track is all the way up there. We're also just going to put our tempo BPM back to 110. There we go. Height, as I said, just determines how tall it is. Put it on half if you want a short one or normal if you want to keep it the same. Now, trigger type. The way that this works, this is very important, is if we hit it, it's a trigger. So each time we hit it, the bar goes down the track. Now, if we have it on an on off switch, if we hit it and then hit it again, you'll see that it starts and then stops, starts and then stops. The way that this is very useful is if you put looping on infinite, you can start it, which means that the bar is constantly going to be going at infinite. It's just going to keep going and then bouncing back and then stepping on it will stop it so it no longer travels. We're just going to put everything back on the defaults for now. Zone visible in game. This is pretty straightforward. If you want the bar, this kind of rectangular bar to be showing while you're in the game, you'll just put it on. Typically, you're not going to want that, though. You're going to want it off. Trigger is active. What this means is that if we put it on always, it means that each time we touch it, the bar is going to kind of reset back to the beginning and it won't make it to the end. However, if we have it only when not sweeping, if we try to hit the button, it will not work until the bar is completely done with its cycle. As you can see there, the bar will keep going no matter if we touch it or not until it reaches the end and then it will trigger again. Direction is forward, reverse, and bounce. That just means the pattern or direction that the signal is going to be going. We have it on forward right now, so it goes from the music sequencer out. If we put that on reverse, it goes the opposite direction, so it starts at the end and comes to the music sequencer, and then bounce goes all the way there, and then bounces back and comes on back like that. Put that on forward. Damage is how much damage you want this to do. If you don't want any damage, put it on off. If you want some damage, you know, you can mess with that. But pretty much what this just means is that if you have it on elimination, if it's traveling like this and it touches anyone, like if this bar is traveling and hits somebody in its path, it will deal damage to them. AKA if it's on elimination, it will kill them. Activate on game phase. What this means is that the music sequencer will activate when this game is starting, if that makes any sort of sense. I'll try to explain this. So off just means, or never rather, just means that this music sequencer is never on unless it gets touched. Pretty straightforward. Now, pregame means when the island is published, let's say you play a featured island. That featured island, before you hit the start game button, is in the pregame options, okay? So if you enter a featured portal, you can read all the signs and there's, you know, the this thing that says help, the thing that says support a creator, and then the button that says start game. That is your pre-game. Before you actually physically start the game, that is your pre-game. Warm up, I believe, is when the... I'm actually not 100% on what warm up is because I just changed it recently. But I believe this is when you're building and you start the game and it says like 3, 2, 1, go. That's what I believe warm up is. I'm not 100% on that, so don't quote me. But game start pretty much just means when the game is physically started, the music sequencer will start activating. So how is this useful? Well, let's say that you want a button that travels infinitely and it's an on off switch. Okay, so we'll put the trigger as a on off switch and then looping infinitely. Now what's going to happen here? is well if you start the game when game start is off then this is just going to be a dead button but if game start is on then what goes on here is that as soon as the game starts this button is going to constantly be moving until it is turned off so i hope that makes a little bit of sense pretty much just allows you to make very advanced mechanics and maybe what you can do which is really cool is you can have a doorway that is constantly trapping the player so let's say we put the length to a half 
and then put it on an on off switch. Now what's going to happen is when the game starts, there's going to be a barrier that is constantly blocking the player from progressing until they turn it off, which you can do with some advanced tricks that we will show later. But that is just one use of this. There are very, very many uses, and we will try to cover a couple of them in this video. So we'll turn this on never just for now, and then start sequence I'm receiving from and stop sequence I'm receiving from are in regards to triggers. Now, the way that you get triggers, I'm not going to go with them too in depth in this video. But that's for a completely other video because triggers are a very advanced mechanic on their own. But if you go to the devices tab, there should be a button or it should be a little thing called triggers. It's in the top right corner currently as of patch 10.2, I believe. But if you grab it and spawn it down like so, you can just pick it up so it's not on the ground. Now, what you can do with these is at the very bottom you can have one triggered transmit on channel, let's say channel one. And then what you can do with the music sequencers is start sequence run, re run receiving from channel one or start sequence run receiving from channel one. So what this means is if players activate this, which they could do with damage or just by walking into it via these options right here, if players damage this, so hit it with their pickaxe like so, what that'll do is it'll trigger this to either start or stop. As I said, we're not going to get too in-depth with that today, as that's going to be another video on its own. Okay, we just went through every single setting. There's a lot. There's a lot to take in. I understand that. So we're just going to be going through a couple different mechanics and things that you can do with these. So let's start with something that is very simple, and that is causing a car to roll down a ramp. So you're going to want your sequencer. So the ramp is anywhere within the bar like so the ramp can be anywhere within this four long kind of bar that this creates and you're going to want to put a ramp so the vehicle will roll down the ramp let's go to our devices gallery and let's grab a vehicle for this we're going to use a shopping cart you could use any shopping cart's a little easy so once you have your shopping cart out you want to come to this side like so the reason you want to come over here is because the way that shopping carts place is if we build up a little bit and you place them, they always face to the right of where you're looking. So if we place them like this, you can see it's facing to the right. We face it like this. And if we place it like this, you can see you can kind of change the orientation. So you're always going to want to place it like so. So now the shopping cart will roll down properly. Now we're going to go into the settings and turn it on damage you're going to need the damage to be very low this is important the damage is not on very low the shopping cart will not be triggered the way that the reason that we put it on very low is so when the music sequencer extends outwards and releases its signal the shopping cart will take a very very low amount of damage which the shopping cart taking damage will activate it meaning that it can roll down the ramp i know that's a little confusing but it's just the way that fortnite creative works so if we put it on very low it will not activate while we're in the game like so. It just doesn't do that. But if we start the game, I can show you guys really quickly here, is if we start the game, it's a little bit far away, but just fly on over. Oops. We hit it now. You'll notice that the shopping cart rolls down. Now this can be used for a lot of different things, but we're not going to get too in depth with this because I could literally talk for about an hour of what you can do with these, but just know that you can activate vehicles. So let's say you have a puzzle map, for example, you can kind of have this be in the ceiling. So you can have this be all the way up here in the ceiling, and then a vehicle will roll down and drop so the players can activate it. That's just one example. Another example is that these vehicles actually activate sequencers. So that could be very useful. If you have a sequencer over here like so now what will happen is when you hit this button the shopping cart will roll down and then hit this button which will then activate it so that's just another thing that you can do with the shopping carts as i said we're not going to get too in depth as this is just supposed to be a creatives basics tutorial not really an advanced tutorial on all of this stuff i do have some tutorials on how to make very advanced mechanics in fortnite including like combination locks, randomizers, unlocking doors, things along those lines. 
So that's just one of the things that you can do with sequencers is have it activate a car. Now, there's also something very, very useful here. You know, if we put the tempo BPM to 180, what's gonna happen is if we put another sequencer here, fun fact also, this is actually pretty cool, is you don't actually have to have the music sequencers in the box to activate with one another. If you have them one tile off like so, it'll still activate. So when this one gets touched, you'll notice that this bar over there will still get activated, even though it's not exactly in it. You could do the same thing on the left and right sides of this, like so, I believe. Yeah, let's see, it'll go off no matter where it is. So it doesn't exactly have to be in it, but if you want to, you can put it in there. So let's just put this on off damage again. Now what you'll notice is, let's say we have a timed sort of system, whereas we want this to reach this end as quickly as it physically possibly can. We want it to touch this wall as, fa as fast as it can. If we put it to speed 180, you'll notice that it still kind of takes a little while to get to that second button, and it just takes kind of a while to get to the end there. Well, how are we gonna fix this? We can do a thing called instant signals. And the way that this works is if we put this back to 110, it doesn't really matter, but we'll put it to 110 for now. What you can do is change the direction from forward to reverse, and we can do that on all of them. If we put it to reverse, you'll notice that it actually creates an instant signal. And we'll just have a box here, just so you can kind of see We'll put the height to pretty high. We'll just we'll just do that, just so we can see if this gets activated in an instant. So you'll notice when I hit this button, instead of a wire or a signal taking forever to go around these corners, it'll now instantly activate this box over here, like so. You might not have even caught it, but it activated it very very quickly. You can see the little bar there, and we can do it again, and like so. So now you'll see that there is a bar over here instantly without it having to travel down the tracks. This is extremely useful and I use this for almost all of my mechanics that I want to activate instantly and I don't want players to wait for. So what else? Well, we got on off switches, which I have explained. We have reverse tracks, AKA instant signals, as well as we have low damage for moving cars. One other thing that you can do with these is you can put them on a ramp to have the signal go up a ramp like so. This can be very useful if you're trying to make a vertical kind of path. If you have something like this, you can build up and you can have a button like so. I know it looks very confusing, but now you kind of got a vertical sort of signal. That's all we got right now for vertical signals, unfortunately, um, until we have a little bit more in-depth kind of vertical signals. This is, this is all we really got. Um, but that's a vertical signal right there. If you want the signal to just go upwards, uh, you can, I mean, you could ultimately just do that on the ground too, if you really wanted to something like this, we put the something like that. We could have another vertical signal that leads all the way up to here. And then that activates the button all the way up there very quickly, like so. Stuff like that. You could do a lot with sequencers is what I'm trying to say. I know I'm just kind of rambling, but this is just the basics of sequencers and what they do. I went through all the settings. I talked about the music a little bit. That's a, that's not really mechanics based. I mean, you could do stuff with it if you want to make a song. You could have them laid out in the order and then it will play a song back to you. But this is kind of the basics of music sequencers and what they do. And you could truly do a lot with these. I know it doesn't seem like it, and it sounds like there's not a ton to do with these, but on screen right now, I have some kind of clips of what I've done with sequencers and how advanced you can make them and how in depth you can make them. But that is going to be it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy, I am trying to make more of these creative basics videos as well as if you guys want to see anything or maybe you want me to go more in depth on certain things or maybe you just have suggestions for what I did right and what I did wrong, just let me know. Leave them in the comments. Also, trying to get this out there to everyone who is subscribed to my channel. I am now streaming on Twitch. Yes, 
twitch.tv slash Mr. Underscore Relatable. I stream every single weekday in the mornings, typically. But if you are interested, please feel free to stop on by and maybe just drop a follow or even just a say hey in the chat. It'd be greatly appreciated. But as I said, if you guys did enjoy it, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys, hopefully, within the next video. Bye!